Welcome to Creatively Using the Creative Suite. Here's your host, Eric Burnskill. Hi, welcome to this week's episode of the Creatively Using the Creative Suite podcast. My name is Eric Burnskill, and this week I wanted to show you how to make a really cool effect, which is just based off a one pixel wide line from any photo that you can grab. So it's a, a 3D pixel stretch effect, which I call it. Um, and it's again really simple to do. So all we need is a photo, which I've searched up from the free stock exchange sxc.hu. And if you want the ID, it's 1289287. So 1289287. And I'm going to click on that fully to, uh, to copy it. So I'm going to get the entire one. And the reason that why I choose just this one was because it has a fair amount of color in it. And it's also shifting a bit in color. So it's going from the blues to the to the um, oranges back to the blues and, and so on. So in Photoshop, I'm going to create a new document. And I'm just going to first paste this one in. Like that. And then I'm going to create my artboard, my canvas. And I'm just going to do that 800. Let's name that 3D pixel stretch. And I'm going to make it 800 by 600. You can make it just any size you want. And I'm going to, from this one, I'm first I'm going to go to image. Come down to image size. And I'm going to scale this to 800 by 640. So... So I have the same amount of canvas here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the rectangular marquee tool here. And I'm going to select the single row marquee tool. And when I do this, I get the one pixel tool line here. Which is uh, as wide as the document. And I'm going to choose a place here where I've got a lot of color shifting. I'm going to go back into my canvas. I'm just going to paste that in there. First, before though, I'm going to go to the background, choose a light or darker gray as the foreground color and black or slightly grayish black as the background. I'm going to do a radial gradient from just about the center and out a bit here to give it some depth. Then with the single line here, I'm going to Go and press Command-T on the Mac, Control-T on the PC to bring up Free Transform. And I'm going to tr just stretch this out. So I'm going to do it up a bit. And then I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to nudge this up using my arrow keys. And then again, going into Free Transform, Control or Command-T. Stretch it out some further. Actually, not that much. Go into my Perspective. And we're going to reduce the perspective here. And so together here, we have this stretch column. So I'm going to reduce that in size. And let's get that right there. And if you want now, you can go and search uh, for more photos. You can also, of course, grab lines other ways across this photo. And just copy that, paste it over. Do the same thing here, stretch it out. And because we're using duplicate using Command J, Control J on the PC, nudge it over, and let's see here, stretch it out some further. I'm bringing it in using the perspective tool here, and then scaling it down to the size I want. So you can work with this, you can create some shapes here. Um, in any way you want. And if you want, you can rotate this so you can get it to be in any orientation you want here. You're not limited the way you selected originally. So you can go ahead, you can um, work with the single pixel line. I'm duplicating that one. Uh, again, I'm going to make it a bit thicker, duplicate that, nudge it up. Bring in the perspective here. Let's not do it as much here. Get a little larger one. Now let's rotate that fully around. 
and placing these in slightly different places. We can also grab our burn tool here and on the different ones here we can begin to come down and burn in the colors or if we so wanted I can group each and every one of these. So I select them both using the shift key and then I hit command G on the Mac or control G on the PC. So grouping them together. And then I can add a little layer mask here, which using the gradient tool and default gradient, I can begin to fade in, or I can use a brush. Just making sure I, I load a original brush here, and I probably want to paint with black so I can hide. I'm gonna make it fairly good size here, so I can slightly fade in here, like this. You can do this to the other two as well. If you just want to pull in a little bit at the bottom here. And then finally, I'm gonna, after I just blur this down too, I'm gonna go again to Stock Exchange and I'm gonna just do a search for parchment. I want a piece of old paper here. And that's gonna serve as our background textures. It's gonna add, grungify the, the background just slightly. Let's see here what I can find. This is a good texture. Let's see if I can use it. Standard restrictions. Let's pull that. So this isn't exactly old paper. It's been tampered with a bit, but it will work for our purposes here. Let's see. Allow the entire photo to load here, and then I can copy it. into Photoshop, paste it in above our background layer, probably scale it down again, free transform, command or control T. And once I've scaled it down, I'm holding down my shift key to scale it proportionally, so I don't whack it out of proportions. So once I have this down a bit here, I'm gonna play around with my blending modes here. And I, I'm gonna, I have a suspicious feeling that some of these blend modes is going to work much nicer than the others. So it's probably overlay here one of the lights here. So I think the overlay looks kind of good. And then you can go ahead and tamper with the 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 background here. So we can have it fade out in the edges. We can also reverse it to leave a black hole in the middle here. So I think this this is beginning to look kind of good. So you obviously need to spend a little bit more time with this than I'm doing here in order to get this exactly right. But you're you're getting the effect and we're getting the pixel stretch effect with a texture of an older paper in the background. And all of this just using a single pixel line from any photo that you can grab, which is just a, bit, a little bit colorful. So thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of the Creatively Using the Creative Suite podcast. My name is Eric Burnskill. Thank you for watching. I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>